Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour à tous. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Haudenosaunee, the ancestral lands of the Huron Wendat, and home to many diverse Indigenous peoples, First Nations, Inuit, and Metis peoples. My name is Ekwinder Gahir. I'm the Member of Parliament for Mississauga Malton, and I'll be your host for today's proceedings. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Canadians have been impacted by global supply chain disruptions. Ensuring that essential goods reach middle-class Canadians as quickly as possible and that food, medicine, and other critical supplies are accessible to all who need them has always been a top priority for this government. That's why earlier this year, Minister Al Gabra hosted a national supply chain summit. This summit brought together industry, shippers, organizations, that run critical infrastructure to discuss how better to streamline Canada's supply chain. The complex challenges facing our supply chains are not uniquely Canadian, they are global. But there are unique Canadian dimensions to supply chain challenges. We can take pride in the fact that our efforts, the efforts of our workers and business people who have stepped up to keep our goods and people moving, are self-stocked and our critical supplies sent to where they are needed most training a little bit, so I apologize for that. The National Supply Chain Summit was the starting point in a national conversation to identify and execute actions together to strengthen our supply chains and to make them more resilient in the face of future adversity. A task force, the National Supply Chain Task Force, was also launched by the Minister of Transport to complement measures the government was already taking, including a series of roundtables and consultations. I'm very pleased to be here today with Minister Al Gabra as he shares important information related to the National Supply Chain Task Force. Please join me in welcoming him to speak. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Equinder, for that uh, in introduction. Um, see, we're uh, we're demonstrating. We're learning from truck drivers. We'll not let rain or snow stop us from this announcement. Um, let me just say, let me take a second first before I get into my remarks to express my appreciation to Rosedale, Broly, and all of their drivers and all the staff who are here. Uh, particularly, I had a chance to speak with Joe who gave me a short ride. You know, um, Many of us don't spend a lot of time thinking about how our goods got to our kitchen table or how they got to the grocery stores. Um, but certainly COVID-19 pandemic has reminded all of us how important it is of the work that our trucking companies, our truck drivers, and those who support them do day in and day out. So when the entire economy was shut down, when all of us were at home worried about COVID and worried about the illness that it brought, truck drivers kept on do, doing their job, day in and day out. It provided us, they all provided us with the food we needed, the products we needed, and they didn't flinch. So there, we could never say thank you enough to our truck drivers, to those who support them, to those who employ them, and I am here today to really highlight that point. So thank you uh, to all of you. Joe, thank you. Uh, great story, Canadian story, of how um, Joe and his family and all of his colleagues have built our economy. And I want to make sure that all Canadians uh, are reminded of this every day. So now on to my remarks. And uh, let me just say, as I alluded to, I, and by the way, I'm here with my colleague, Peter Fonseca, Member of Parliament for Mississauga and East Cooksville. Peter, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Over the last couple of years, our economy has experienced several dramatic events. The COVID-19 pandemic, extreme weather events, labor shortages, and the war on Ukraine have all contributed to major supply chain disruptions. These disruptions are adding even more pressure on inflation and the rising cost of living that people around the world, including here at home, are dealing with. And I want you to know that your government is taking action. Notre gouvernement prend 
this axiom. Last January, as Equinder just said, I hosted a supply chain summit and created a task force. The mandate of this task force was to produce a report to provide ideas on how we can strengthen our supply chain. This morning, the task force released their final report. I am very pleased to welcome this report. And my sincere thanks to the co-chairs, uh, Ms. Louise Yako and John Gotso, and the entire task force members for their important and excellent work. The task force consulted extensively with industry and labor representatives from across the country to get their perspective on priority areas. They also met with representatives in the United States to understand how we can improve our shared North America supply chain. Today, they delivered results in the form of this report. I can tell you it is focused on action, collaboration, and transformation to improve Canada's supply chain. To this end, it contains 21 recommendations that include things like easing port congestion by transforming our ports and terminals into digital data hubs, developing a labor strategy specific to supply chains that will address labor shortages so that the economy can grow, and enhancing Canada's competitiveness by working closely with the U.S. provinces and territories on recognizing each other's regulations, policy, and processes. I'm confident this report will help guide our work in making our supply chain better and, and deliver more affordable and uh, products and goods to Canadians. Ça rapport va nous aider à renforcer notre chain de provisionnement. The report will also inform our government's national supply chain strategy, which will be announced in the coming months. Next week, I'll be traveling across the country. Next week, I'll be traveling across the country to deliver good news on how we are going to ease congestion in bottlenecks at ports, use digital technology, technology in the supply chain, and modernize regulations to make it easier and more efficient to move goods. I also want to mention that all of this would not be possible without those on the ground. I mentioned truckers, but I want to include flight crews, dock workers, mariners, rail workers, logistics experts, and so many others. So once again, thank you to everyone working in the transportation sector and to the task force for their excellent work on behalf of all Canadians. I think it's appropriate, by the way, that we had this announcement here today. Not only are we highlighting the importance that a trucking industry play in our sector, but we're also reminding people of the importance of the aviation sector. So uh, once again, thank you for hosting us here. I look forward to continuing our collaboration with you. I know you have tremendous insight and ideas on how we can work together to further support our supply chain support our truckers, support our businesses. Thank you, and I look forward to continuing this conversation. Quinder, back to you. Thank you, Minister, for sharing the important highlights of the National Supply Chain Task Force final report with us. I would like to now invite Roli Ula, President and owner of the Roosevelt Group, to say a few words. Mr. Ola? Thank you. Well, the rain seems to have held off a little bit, and uh, I can get started. No airplanes. Well, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> My name is Roly Yaw, and I'm the president of Rosedale Transport. Today, I'm joined by several of my Canadian Trucking Alliance partners and Ontario, Ontario Trucking Association members that I have been a privilege to work with over the years as a board member of both organizations. CDR, CTA recent, represents over 5,000 trucking fleets across Canada who employ over 250,000 Canadians directly um, involved in the supporting the supply chain. It's the supply chain that we're here to discuss with Honorable Omar El Gabra today and uh, he's the Minister of Transport for Canada. I've got to get my glasses here. I'm at that age. 
Minister Algabra has been a great ally and support, supportive of our sector through the pandemic. Our sector, like others, has faced many challenges over the last two and a half years, and we have met them to the benefit of all Canadians and the sectors we serve. One of the questions... with the Minister today is what the implications of truck driving shortage in Canada are and its solutions. The implications of the truck driver shortage are being felt by all Canadian business and households today. There is an old saying in our sector, if you got it, a truck brought it. However, that saving, the saying really missed the major economic contributor to our society, the truck driver who had to drive that truck. In 2002, we are learning as a, in 2022, we're learning as a society, if we don't get it, it's because we're short close to 3,000 commercial truck drivers in Canada. That's hard to believe. So those truck drivers, trucks sit idle. And if we want to help solve the supply chain crisis, we're in the midst of, and help address inflation, we must deal with the truck driver shortage. Today's meeting with Minister El Gabra is a part of the process of our sector and the government of Canada is committed to in that the government of Canada is committed to in helping solve many of the issues impacting our trucking supply chains. CTA stands ready to work with the government of Canada to work in a cooperative manner as our sector enters a critical time in its history. And I want to thank uh, the minister and his other partners from Mississauga. Uh, the associates from Rosedale for helping organize this today. A little bit of work went into this. Uh, uh, we, we've been working the last two days and trying to organize the trucks to the benefit of this meeting. So thanks very much for inviting me, and I'll pass it back to, to you. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, and thank you to the Rosedale Group for hosting us today. Now we'll open it up to questions, and I'll let Nadine moderate. Thank you. Good news story. <laughs> I guess we don't have any questions, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Thank you. Dimitri, oh. 